Jarvis. Just taking his dinner to his Peter. He'll be here in a minute. Have you right. fixed it? Aye. Ah, where? Hang on, Fred. Look, if I see... Seagull says he's found a place. On your way, Chalky. What's the matter, Mac? Just washing me mug? Aye. Well, we're just talking business. Out. Okay, okay. I don't like that. Ah, don't worry. Chalk is sound enough. Yeah? Yeah, just a wee bit nosy, that's Yeah, all. well, that's all it takes to make this lot come a tumble. What's the score, Brian? We've got a load of old books to dump in that cell that's used as a store among the ones this afternoon. I'll be there when your lot come by with the laundry baskets. What about your screw? He's on a meeting this afternoon, so he'll unlock it and leave me to it. What about that red band? What's his name? Clayton. Oh, he'll be working in the library. You'll have to work a bit lively, Ed. Oh. Are you sure they can do that? Right, you lot, hurry it up. I've got to eat as well, you know. I can't. Um, any letters from me, Mr. White? See you later. Yeah, I've got a rush. I've got a visit. Got a few quid coming in. I'll be all right for a smoke. Sure, Brian. Jarvis! All come right. on! All right, Mr. Pike. I'll see you, Brian. And in my capacity as security officer on visits this afternoon, sir, I searched Jarvis directly after his visit and found these two five-pound notes up. Is that right, Jarvis? Yes, sir. Did you brought them in during your visit? No, sir. I had them in my possession before I went on my visit, sir. Who was his visitor? He had two visitors, sir. His wife and the eldest daughter. Sir, my wife wouldn't All dream right, of trying to be... that's enough. But... Where did he have them concealed, exactly, Mr Brown? In his fly, sir. You're very thorough, Mr Brown. Thank you, sir. I'd have thought you'd have had more sense, Jarvis. Up here from Dartmoor for visits, eligible for parole again in a few weeks. You're experienced enough to know what a serious charge this is in prison. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt when you say your wife didn't bring these notes in. For her sake, not yours. However, all future visits will be closed. But, sir... And as you don't deny the fact... Sir, that before... Position... Can I say something, sir? All right, what is it? Well, it's kind of private-like, sir, you know? Anything you have to say concerning this charge, Jarvis, can be said in front of my officers. Well, it's more of a personal matter, sir. But it is relevant to this, sir. It really is very important, sir. All right, Jarvis, but it had better be. Would you and the other two officers wait outside a moment, please, Mr. Brown? Yes, sir. Well? What's up with you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here I Nick Jarvis, then. Eh? Yeah? What do you mean? Straight. Eddie Jarvis. He's down the block now. What for? Well, uh, the way I hear it, they found some rope and a grappling hook down in that storeroom on the ones. Who told you this? Screw our graph with. When was this? About an hour ago. What else did he tell you? Nothing. Just that they had the word about this escape gear and it was down to Jarvis. Well, I thought he was a mate of yours, you know, so I'll let you know. That bastard Seagull. I'm telling you. Come on, Matt, we don't know that, do we? 
You know what a Fanny Merchant old chokey is? Yeah. Let's wait and see what the strength is before we start doing it. He was the outside. only one that knew about you, apart from us, wasn't it? Oh, look, maybe Eddie told someone, you know what it's uh, like here, mate. You've got about as much chance of keeping things strong as getting struck Eddie by Eddie wouldn't say nothing to nobody, oh no. It must have been Seeger. Look, don't jump to conclusions, Mac. We'll find out the full SP. Aye. And if it says Seeger, it's our library exchange tomorrow, isn't it? He's still up there. Yeah. We'll get him down here. We can't dwell much longer. How? We'll just go and whisper in his ear, you Bert. Cunning like. Tell him we want a word. I'll we'll say he won't come. He will. Oh, I don't know, mate. Oh, where were you, George? Go on. Might be a bit naughty here, Terry. <laughs> don't worry. We'll just put the frighteners on him for now. Look, if he is a wrong and he, he'll ask for protection, then we won't be able to get near him. Aye, there is that. I mean, he could go screaming straight to the screw. Aye. We wouldn't have an out, not in here. He'd no do that. How do you know? Because he knows what'll happen to him if he does. Look, we're not even sure... Well? There's plenty of other cons in here, isn't there? Who's this say? Well, I don't know. It's just it's a bit iffy in here, that's all. Where else? He's on his way down there. You two get behind him. What's the matter, Terry? What's the matter? The gear. Aye. You heard about it then? Oh, aye, we heard about it. I was going to try and get across the sea this evening. Was you? Well, of course. Oh, aye. Well, if library changed dinner time, I couldn't get away, could I? Nor can we now, can we? Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, do you? Well, you know. I mean, there's nothing I could do about it, was there? You said it couldn't be found there. Well, the chances were. But they found it easy enough, I hear. Yeah, and Eddie's down the block under sus. And that is a bit odd. Considering you were the only one that knew about it, apart from us. What do you mean? Now, I think that you know well enough what we mean. Look, you don't think I said anything out of order, do you? Aye. We do. Oh, turn it in, Terry. I wouldn't say anything. You know that. Uh. <laughs> oh, Nick. What's the matter? Come on, get him back. Get back, for God's sake. No, no, no. Look, we can't Wait. just stand here with him. All right, all right, all right. That hook, put him on that hook. Right. OK. Now get some books and get out. You come on in. OK. George, come on, you're all right. Get out. Right, that's about it, Bert. Come on, any more? What's left? Just the threes. All right, then. Where's Seagull got to? I don't know, sir. He was here a moment ago. Seagull! He's probably gone back to the recess. Hmm. Sit with these stragglers, will you? Right, sir. Yes, there's one down here, sir. All right, chase him up. Right, sir. Come along, you. Library's closing. Come along. Mr. Giles? Then what did you do? 
I rang the alarm bell and I telephoned the centre. Ah, yes. You rang the alarm bell. I have already apologised for that, sir. It was instinctive. If there's any trouble in prison, particularly violence, we have to ring that bell immediately. But you must have realised that Seeger was dead. That 20 officers thundering into the library all over the place would probably disturb or obliterate God knows what evidence. I've said I'm sorry. All right. All right. You're right back on the scene with a heavy bomb. Right, Mr. Rand? Well, I was one of the first down, actually. I'd only just left, see? And you were the only one to touch the body before the doctor arrived? Well, I didn't move him or anything like. I mean, it was obvious he was dead after we'd taken a proper look, so to speak. So I just well, I closed his eyes, and you know. I did have a look round for a weapon. Yeah, so you said. Anything from the search yet? Not yet. We're turning the place over. Right, well, you better get back to that landing. Turn the place over. When you've done it once, do it again if necessary. Don't miss anything. On the landing, yes, sir. Find anything? No. Nope. But as soon as they get them back, they'll start looking for blood traces. Yeah. You two turn the beds over. How does the book changing system work exactly? <clears throat> well, there are usually several officers collecting and delivering the inmates to their landings, but we were a bit short handed yesterday, so Mr. Holmes did most of it. The thing is, he goes along unlocking, say, half the doors, and the inmates make their own way to the library. It's really only casual supervision, of course. Why? Why? Well, uh, prison security is mostly concerned with the perimeter now, you know, the grounds and walls. It gives the inmates more freedom of movement within inside the prison itself. I see. You were on your way to A-Wing to collect the rest of the men when the alarm went off. Uh, yes, threes to be exact. One, two and four had already been exchanged. How long does it take for a landing to change its books? Well, it varies. A-Wing contains the most men. It's your two landing. When everybody changes their books, of course, then there are those who come along for a chat with their mates' life. But uh, I think we say an average attendance of 20 per landing. How long does it take? 20 minutes. Half hour. It depends. On what? Well, I'll push we are for time. We have to worry them up sometimes. Is it possible for an inmate to stay over in the library and still be there when the next batch arrives? Yes, it's possible. In fact, I say it's not unusual. Why? Well, unless the officer on duty knows every man on the wing and his exact location, it's not always possible for him to know which landing he comes from. So you don't clear the library, then, before you go to collect the next lot? No. No, it's not strictly according to the book, of course, but it saves a lot of messing about and there's no great security risk. Hmm. So, our killer, or killers, could have come from any of the landings on A-Wing? Yes, I suppose so. Except the threes, of course. They hadn't been unlocked yet. That's nice. That only leaves us with about 150 possible suspects. What's your fleas, Stanley, about on your own, Gov? <laughs> Careful, Davis. That's the second spin we've had. So, uh... So they take our clothes away and they give us new ones. So why give us another dry bath? It's no us, George. No us. It's the landing, isn't it? Can you think of anything better to do? Stop worrying. You didn't have to bloody kill him, did you? It was an accident, George. You remember that. So what? No one's going to believe that. I will. Nobody's going to know who did it either. Adley! Oh. Turn that lock in, Mac. We're all in this together, don't forget. Right. Well, don't you forget either. Oh. 
But what about the ship if they find it? What does it matter if they do it? Then it can it come back on us? That's a big one. They found it blocking the boat, but when they use for this, you know, Where did they find it? Recess on B1. It was blocking the boat. If you were going from the library to A Wing, you'd have to pass by it. Show me dumped it there. Did he? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? No. That recess. Not to be used till I looked at it. Well, I fixed that already. We may have to strip down the pipes. Could be something there for the lab. All right, thank you. I'll be along in a minute. My Dawson. Sir. Have this photographed, then show it to the pathologist. Find out if it could have been the weapon. When he's finished with it, pass it on to fingerprints and forensic. All right, sir. Did you get anything from the assistant governor? Not much. But he did say that yesterday, the governor rumbled an escape plot. But unfortunately, he's away until this afternoon. An escape? Any idea who's involved? No, it's not known. How has it rumbled? He doesn't know that either. Governor handled it himself. He ordered a search in an old cell used as a storeroom. Escape gear was found. Have you seen this cell? Of course. Harrison Morton are turning it over now. If the governor knew where to look, someone must have grasped. Possibly. And if that someone was Seeger and his mates found out... Yeah, it could be, but it's just a guess at the moment. Has to be until the governor gets back. Let's just stick to the facts we know at the moment. Right, then. Time of death. Within 20 minutes of the outside of the body being discovered. Cause that shiv in his chest. Ah, uh, we don't know that was the weapon. Our lay odds. Just the facts, please. Well, that's it. Or them. <laughs> <laughs> What's the joke? The post is on his way. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what sticking a note in the box means in here? Hmm? I'll tell you. It seems that when some con wants to impart some information discreetly, like grousing someone to the authorities, one of the ways is to stick a note in the letterbox. There's one on each wing. Yeah. The censor gave me these this morning. He collected them with the mail. There's eight notes here telling us who the killer is. Eight notes. And eight different names. Don't get flash with me, White. Why not? What you gonna do? You wrote this note. Huh? Who says? The censor says it's your handwriting. So what? You admit it then. Oh, I cannot tell a lie. It was I. Why say it's this man? Because he's a grass. Deliberately impeding the police in their inquiries is an offence. Oh dear. I hope you're not going to lock me up. Go on, get out. Sorry I couldn't help you, Inspector. Oh, Dawson. Sir. Don't send the next man in yet. I want a word with Mr. Ward. Get yourself a cup of tea. We're using the prison officer's mess on D1. Right, sir. Having your first lesson in prison culture, Alan. This isn't my first visit to a prison. Well, you've worked on other cases inside. Not exactly. Just visited men following inquiries into other matters, eh? Well, that goes for both of us, doesn't it? Villains are villains in or out. This inquiry is no different to any other murder inquiry. It's completely different. It's a reversal of all the usual problems. Normally, we start with a crime and nothing. Here, we have a surfeit of information already. A skate plot with no names. Eight different names in letterboxes, very useful. Masses of statements from dozens of inmates, most of them contradictory, and all of them deliberately misleading. Equally useless. But that's the normal pattern inside when an event takes place. Is that what you call it? It's what it is. Look, any little thing that happens in here, out of the ordinary, is an event. 
Some people call it the village syndrome. It's a product of gossip and rumour. Rumour that grows into an epidemic when an event occurs. And the murder of an inmate's an event with a capital E. So it's an event. That means that they can hold up the inquiry, sit back and laugh at us? Yes. I'm afraid they can. Then it's time we did something about it. What do you suggest? Bring back the cat? Oh, look, use your imagination. We lock them up in medieval buildings. We give them futile work to do. They can't even make the simplest decisions about their own lives. Is it surprising they're antisocial? They were antisocial to start with, or they wouldn't be here at all. Maybe. But they are here, and we sent them. Now, for the first time in their lives, they've got a chance of playing us up without reprisals. They've nothing to be afraid of anymore. We can't pressure them, charge them, arrest them, lock them up. It's all happened. They can't lose. And they know it. <laughs> so what do you see there? Nothing. He <laughs> slung me out, didn't he? Really? Yeah. Oh, dear. Don't seem to be getting very far, do they? Nah, mugs. Aye, oh, dead right. You, uh, who do you reckon done Seeger and Mac? I've no idea, Chalky. I don't listen to Nick Gossip. <laughs> that, uh, that mate of yours still down the block, is he older? What's his name? Who's that? Uh... Eddie Jarvis. Why, Jarvis? Nothing. I was just wondering, you know? Yeah, uh, I can see that. <laughs> well, he, he can't get nicked for if he's down there, can he? <laughs> well, that's true. Hey, uh, perhaps it's a screw, eh? Well, it won't be him. Anybody who was in the library, he said. The way that Inspector Ward carries on, you'd think he was us, Stubbseeger. you just put him for the P.O.'s exam, haven't you? Yeah. You can forget that. George! Well, you know I sit down. I think they want to see us again. Yeah, what if they do? I don't know. It seemed, you know, too easy, didn't it? Aye, and that is how it'll stay if you keep that shut. Well, someone may have seen something. No, we didn't notice. Oh, you see, there's always some nosy kid in here willing to make himself busy. Have a lot from the tours. No, just the ones we know were there when it happened. I've got those two library officers making me a list of definites. Well, they've all had their preliminary interviews in the classrooms, eh? Yes. Come in. Ready, sir. Yeah, all right. We're ready. We'll the next one in. Sir. Uh, Mr. Kingdom. Good Lord. Harry the horse, what are you doing here? What do you mean? It's you got me done. Well, you shouldn't pick the pockets of off-duty policemen, Harry. But I thought you were in the scrubs, though. That's for stars. Stars? Oh, first-timers, yeah. Well, that's not you, is it, eh? Well, come on, Harry, sit down. Sit down. Oh, you don't know my D.I., do you? Uh, Mr. Harrison, Mr. Ward, Mr. Ward, Harry the horse. My pleasure. Harry's one of the uh, racing fraternity. He used to travel the racetracks with the whiz mob, relieving careless punters of their winning tickets and their wallets. Very lucrative. Not too much bird if you got done. Still isn't come to that. Tell Mr. Ward how you used to operate, Harry. Oh, come off, he now, come on, it's a very interesting technique. Yeah, I'm aware of that, about this present investigation. Ah, oh, yes. Why'd you do it, Harry? Huh? Why'd you kill Brian Seeger? What, me? What do you mean? Leave off, I didn't do it. All right. Relax. Just testing your reflexes. Wouldn't harm a fly, Harry. Not even a horse fly? Oh, very good. Now, Harry, I want you to tell us all you know about it. Now, before you say nothing, we know for a fact that you were there when it happened. And I know for a fact that you are very observant. Well? I don't know nothing, honestly. Harry. No, straight up. I don't believe you. Straight. It must have happened after I left. Dawson. Sir? 
You got that list of men the library officer remembers as being among the last to leave? Yes, sir, I have. Is Harry among them? Er, uh, yes. Harrison H. Harrison H. Well? Look, Gov, leave me out, can't you? I don't want no aggro. I've got to live here. You do know something about it, then? No, no. I mean, I just don't want to get involved, you know? I just want to do my bird and get out. Did you know Seeger? Yeah, I knew him. He liked to bet. What do you mean, he liked to bet? On the horses, you know. You're running a book in here. Oh. Just a small one, Gov. No arm like. Just a bit of extra snout to help smooth the way. You know who it is. Uh, are you the only bookmaker inside? Oh, leave off. You know the others? Some of them. Harry? Well, most of them. Well, practically all of them, I suppose. Did Seeger bet heavily? No. Just the occasional quarter, you know. Quarter? Quarter ounce of tobacco. You wouldn't say, then, that he was in trouble over gambling? Oh, no. Not Brian. He was too shrewd for that. <laughs> One of your own, like. Know what I mean? Was he? Mm. He was all right, young Brian. Yeah, I expect he just wanted to be left alone to do his bird without any aggravation. Now, look, Harry. I know you're not a grass. I respect you for it. But a man's been murdered. By your own admission, he was a nice fellow. Got a wife, a couple of young kids. Now, this is not a lark. Harry, like you think thieving's a lark. A man has been brutally stabbed to death. Now think about it. Can you help me? I don't know who done it. Honest, Gub. Tell me what you do know. Anything at all. You must have seen or heard something. I saw him hanging there. What? I saw him hanging up on the book rack, you know. Did anyone else that you know of? I don't know. There was no one else about when I saw him. Are you absolutely sure about that? Yeah. I just went round that way. Uh, the sports section's next to it. And there he was, hanging there like... I shot off a bit lively, I can tell you. And you didn't think it necessary to report it to the prison officers? Oh, not me. They had to put it down to me. Yeah? The governor's just back. Sends his compliments. They'll see you whenever you're ready. Fine, that's now. Thank you. Harry, Mr. Ward is going to ask you some more questions. Give him straight answers, please. All right, Harrison. Tell me about the rumours. What rumours? Straight answers, he said. There must be a thousand rumours floating about the Nick, about who did it and why. There's a few. Always is when something's happened. Tell me about the strong ones. The ones you think have substance. I don't know, do I? I mean, a rumour's just a rumour. Mm. Tell me about the escape plot. Oh, you've heard that one, have you? What do you know about it? Nothing, except there's been this bit of chat. According to this chat, was Seeger involved? I don't know. You know. Was he involved? Was he planning to escape? No. Helping out, like. Helping who? I don't know. I haven't heard any names mentioned. Harrison? I don't know, honest. Names, Harrison. Well, I have heard Eddie Jarvis' name stuck up. Hmm. Where's he located? Down the block at the moment. Block? Punishment cells. Why is he there? Ostensibly, he's on Rule 43. That's the rule that allows us to keep men in solitary confinement for anything from suspicion to protection. I'm not being too clear, am I? No. Well, Jarvis belongs to that elite group of men you'll find in any prison, the big boys, bank roll, bandits, bank robbers, that sort of thing. He's trusted completely by his own kind, and that sort of reputation must be maintained by these sort of men at all costs, as I'm sure you'll appreciate. Yes. Jarvis has completed six years of a 12-year sentence. He's up here from Dartmoor on visits at the moment. Uh, they uh, save them up over the year, you know. Mm -hmm. 
is also due up for parole consideration for the third time shortly. He's had enough and badly wants to get out. The day before yesterday, he was discovered and charged with trying to get notes in during a visit. You get the picture? He told you about the escape, providing you dropped the charge. Yes. I didn't know you people went in for that sort of thing. We learned it from the police. <laughs> His mates found out, so you put him on protection. Well, no, it's a bit more involved than that. As I say, these men have a reputation to protect. Suspicion might have fallen on them if we'd found the escape gear just like that, so I arranged with one of my officers to let it be known accidentally on purpose in the right quarter, if you know what I mean, that Jarvis was being held in the block as a suspect escapee. His friends think we've made a mistake, and he remains in the clear with his reputation still intact. What about the real escapees? Ah, yes. Well, uh, unfortunately, Jarvis wouldn't name any names at all. He just said that three men were involved. That was part of the deal. The deal, sir? Don't you wait to be asked. Sorry, but you wanted these and you wanted to see Clayton again. The list of men you asked for. The ones who actually changed their books. It could be any of 20 or 30 men. Most of them know each other outside as well as in. They're a group of professionals, the prison hierarchy. You know, it doesn't seem to me as if you made a very good deal, Governor. On the contrary. An escape has been averted, Mr Kingdom, and that's paramount as far as the Home Office and prison commissioners are concerned. Oh. Now, I gather from information that we've had that Seeger belonged to this elitist group. I wouldn't disagree with that. Now, this cell that was used as a storeroom where the escape gear was found, who has access to it? Well, the staff, naturally. Uh, but, of course, they use us to cart the stuff in and out. What sort of stuff? Junk. Old bed frames. Broken furniture. Books. Books? Yes, books. All soiled. With half their pages torn out. Let me get this straight. You say that this escape gear was found in this old store and that you and Seeger had often been in there? Hmm. About once a week. Alone? Together? Officers present? Oh, depends. Mind you, Seeger had been left alone there on several occasions. But then I had too. Sorting out old books, that sort of thing. And you're suggesting that it was Seeger who hid this escape gear there for someone else and then grasped them? Am I? Yes. But I'm simply telling you one of the rumours that's going about. Who told you this one? <laughs> Come now, Inspector. All right. Tell me who on that list was a friend of Seeger's or even vaguely associated with him. How many? According to Jarvis, there were three of them. Yeah, there's a trio on Clayton's list. They're all in the same cell. He noticed something strange about them. Good. Get the prison records up. I'll be along straight away. Well, it looks as if we may be onto something. The escape business? Well, it's a motive, isn't it? But it wasn't Seeger who told us about it. Our three friends don't know that, do they? They were among the first batch interviewed in the classroom. Ah. Reports from the officers who saw them? Negative. Same story as everyone else who visited the library. Didn't see anything, don't know anything. But the officer who saw Reed noted that he acted a little nervously. Well, maybe it's just the nervous time. Let's hope so. Why, so you can try your third degree on him. Now, this library trustee, Clayton, what do you make of him? A creep. Gets his kicks telling you things by innuendo, you know the type. Did you believe him? Yes, he's nasty enough. What did he mean exactly when he said he saw our little trio acting strangely? Not all of them. What he said was that he noticed something strange about Reed's choice of books. Oh? What? Right, you lot, outside. Oh, blimey, not another spin. Not this time, Davis. The police want to see you again. Out. 
Move, you dozy bastard! On your feet, McGowan! Come on, Noddy, I haven't got all day. All right. Blimey, like a bunch of bloody tarts. I'm coming, Noddy. Come on, then! Well, who are we going to see first? I'll take your pick. Check on those books. Where are you going? See that pal down the block. Uh, let's try to go. What's up? Eddie Jarvis. What's that supposed to mean? My name's Kingdom, Chief Superintendent. Sir? I think you can help me. What was that? You had. Terence Angus McGowan, born Glasgow, 1938. Twelve previous convictions, and now just starting ten years for robbery with violence. Teaching you coppers to read now, are they? When were you thinking of going? Where? Over the wall. <laughs> You've been listening to Gossip, Inspector. You too, McGowan. Like a rumour that he grasped. Who? Brian Seeger. Hardly knew the geezer. Governor says different. That's all right, just between him and me at the moment. I don't know what you're on about. I know at the moment anything you tell me is just between the two of us. That's all right. Look, I'm alone, there's no witness. What do you want? Information. You've come to the wrong kennel, mate. Let's not play games, Jarvis. A man's been murdered. He was a con, so it shouldn't worry you. Could have been you. Maybe it should have been. I'm not interested. Oh? Not even if it spoils your chance of parole. Well? I've done six. I can do the rest. Two more years of this. That's right. Down here on protection. I'm not on protection. You soon could be. He's out of order, telling you that. The governor? Yeah. But he did. Uh, makes no difference now, anyway. Oh? It's too late, mate. Nobody believe it now. They could still hear about it. Who? Your pals, McGowan, Davies, Reed. Who are they? Come off it. I've only been in this nick a couple of weeks on visits. How would I know then? Long-termers like yourself on the same wing. Let's not be stupid, eh? I didn't stick up any names. I know, the governor told me. Sir, what's it all about? You knew Brian Seeger pretty well. Always walked with him on exercise this year as well as last when you're here on visits. You don't uh, deny it. What does that prove? It implies that you arranged with Seeger to stash that escape gear for McGowan and company, and then pretended to have just heard about it when you made your deal with the governor. You'll have a hard time trying to prove that as well. Look, Seeger was a friend of yours. The others are just prison acquaintances. Doesn't that prick your conscience? He's dead now, isn't he? I can't change that. Who caused it? Look, mate, I've been rotting in this stinking boot for six years. I want out. I want to survive. Do you understand that? I was down here. I didn't do it. That's all I know. That's all I want to know. You've got a wife and kids, haven't you? What's that got to do with it? Wife still visits you, is she? Still waiting for you. So? Well, you're lucky. Not many wives hang on that long. We don't all marry slags. Brian Seeger only had eight more months to do. He had a wife and kids waiting for him, too. I see you were done for an assault on a prison officer on your last sentence. Try to slash his face. That was no officer. No? Uh -huh. That was a screw. What did you use that time? Something like this? Hmm. Oh, get him out of here. Let's go, McGowan. Keep him handy. I haven't finished with him yet. I've... 
the books you wanted. Thank you, Mr. Pike. Pike. Sure. Ask one of your colleagues to send in Reed, will you? Right. You must have read quite a few books in the last six years. Enough. These are all fairly recent publications. I enjoy a good book. Brian Seeger really looked after you, didn't he? Look, leave off with that, will you? What do you mean? About Brian, I don't need you to tell me with... Sound. One of the chaps. Yeah. Are you sure there's nothing you want to tell me? No. But you were in the library when it happened. Who says so? The officer who collected you from your landing says you were there for at least 20 minutes. Yeah. Me and a dozen others. Seeger was killed during that time. Well, how do you know? No one saw it happen. Didn't they? Well, what I mean is, I mean, if they had... Yeah? Well, you'd have witnesses, wouldn't you? How do you know we haven't? Look, I don't know anything. I just went to the library and changed me books, that's oh, all. Oh, yes, your books. Taken up any new hobbies since you've been in here? Eh? Hey? Apart from thieving, that is. What do you want about? Well, you've only done a few months of a seven-year stretch. It occurred to me that you might want to study for something. You trying to be funny? No. Tell me, what sort of books do you read, for example? Why? Well, the librarian tells me you will always read westerns. Well, then why ask? Because I'm curious to know why you should suddenly have taken an interest in cinematic techniques. Think of becoming a film director when you get out, is that it? What are you on about? The technique of film editing. The technique of the motion picture camera. The technique of special effects cinematography. These are the three books you borrowed from the library yesterday. Furthermore, they come from the educational shelf. The same shelf that Brian Seeger was found dead behind. I didn't do it. Who did then? I don't know, but it wasn't me. I can't help you. Can't or won't. I'm no grass. I know I pulled a stroke over that escape gear, but I didn't put anybody in it. I'm not going to start now. Villain's code of honour. If you want to put it like that, yeah. Bit late for that, isn't it? Well, I don't think so. Why should I do you people any favours? All I owe you lot is six years of bloody misery. What do you owe Brian Seeger? Look, I've been in this dungeon for three days, right? I wasn't in the library when Seeger got done, right? So, I couldn't possibly know who's done it, right? Maybe. Well, then. But you could have arranged with Seeger to stash that escape gear for McGowan, Davies and Reed. Look, that's all I want you to confirm. Will that prove it's them who done Brian? Not by itself. Oh, I don't know. What good will it do? Let me decide that. Okay. Suppose the gear was for them. Are you telling me it was for them? I'm not going to sign any statements. I'm not going to give evidence. Was it for them? Yeah. It's a long way from being evidence. Motive. Opportunity. Knowing. Proving. I know. What we really need is a confession. <laughs> no chance. Not with McGowan and Davis, anyway. I wouldn't mind betting if we had their intelligence card here, they'd be endorsed, not amenable to interrogation, stamped in red. What about Reed? Jelly and McGowan. Or both, is my guess. You pressured him? All right. Silly question. Of course you did. What about the books? Unexplained. But if it came to a court, his counsel would claim that he was just some poor young man trying to improve his mind, outrageous to convict, etc., etc. Ah, it's a lever of sorts, though. Perhaps with a bit of bluff. Get him in. Yeah. The old hard and soft routine. All right. Which role would you like me to take? <sighs> Right. 
Right. You. Sit there. Do you smoke, lad? Yeah. Oh. Have one of these. So, an improvement on your roll-ups, eh? Right. Now, I see from your record that you've only been inside once before. Seven years. Not a bird for a second timer. What'd you do? Nick the crown jewels? Give you that sort of porridge for nothing nowadays. Mm, maybe it had something to do with the sort of people you were involved with. Right, villains, according to this. I knew what I was doing. Perhaps. But it does indicate the sort of punishment you can receive if you mix with certain types. No form for violence, though, I see, yeah? Not a violent type, are you, Reed? Leave that sort of thing to your mates. Then how come you got yourself mixed up with McGowan and all this business, then? What business? Look, I told him I don't know anything about it. Now, that's not strictly true, is it? It is. I just went to the library to change me books, that's oh, all. Yes. Cinema techniques. I just wanted a change. From westerns? Yeah. Won't do, lad. I didn't. What? Do it? I believe you. Eh? It was McGowan. Wasn't it? Oh, come on, lad. Why are you protecting McGowan? He's just a vicious thug. You scared of him? Of Davies? Yeah. Has he threatened you, McGowan? He has, hasn't he? And don't say he hasn't, because we know he has. He's mad. McGowan? Yeah. Did it in temper, then? No, he... Uh. <laughs> he did what? Stab Seeger. I didn't say he did. You haven't said he didn't. I don't know. Now would I know? Because you were there, lad. No! Clayton, the library red band says different. He what? You heard. He couldn't have. He was down... Down the, the other end of the library, when it happened. Look, lad, we're trying to do you a favour. Put yourself in the clear before I come I down didn't on the do it. You were there when it happened. You knew it was going to happen. That no. That makes you an accessory. And has you got another explanation? Look, we know all about the escape plot. And about your mate Jarvis down the block. We know that Jarvis arranged with Seeger to have that escape gear stashed in the storeroom. And we know that McGowan thought it was Seeger who'd informed the authorities and because of that killed him. It's life if you get done on this one, on top of your seven. It was an accident. Look, he didn't mean to kill him. He says Seeger ran onto the knife. What do you think? Well, it's possible, I suppose. He was scared enough to be telling the truth. What will the charge be? Murder. From what you tell me, I'll have a job making it stick. Well, if murder doesn't stand up, there's manslaughter. Or the director may put in a third charge. Assault occasioning bodily harm. Anyway, fortunately, that's not my headache. But producing the evidence is. Evidence. All we've got is the circumstantial and read statement. And he'll probably withdraw that on the advice of a lawyer. Interrogating men inside here without recourse to the rights of the ordinary citizen, that sort of thing. Well, that's not strictly true. In law, a prisoner has the same rights as any other suspect. In law. In fact, it doesn't help this sort of incident. No. I don't mean the publicity. We come under the Official Secrets Act, so that's not the problem. Anyway, the public couldn't care less if they all kill each other off. It's the way the Home Office will use it to keep the clocks back. What happens to them if they do get away with it? Nothing really. Transfer to different prisons, save their time. The system goes on. And stays the same? Yes. All a bit pointless, isn't it?